Seen countless absurd spellings from the commander in chief. He is called Showbiz Shoebiz. There's hamburgers. There's the uh, smocking gun. There's a lot of these. Even misspelling his wife Melania's name. And he's been ridiculed for it by late night comics. Everybody makes spelling mistakes, all right? Everybody does, I do, everybody does. But on Twitter, Donald Trump makes a lot more of them than most people. CNN's Brian Stelter is without a doubt one of the most deceptive, double-speaking hucksters in the media. CNN brands itself as an objective, hard-hitting news outlet, and it's Brian Stelter's job to go out and sell that image no matter how totally unbelievable it is. He employs many well-known propaganda tactics like repeating lies until they become true and accusing your opposition of what you are actively engaged in. One of his strategies seems to be constantly accusing Fox News of being Trump administration propaganda propaganda, which is ludicrous for two reasons. Look, I don't say this lightly, but these FOTs, these friends of Trump, they are, <laughs> they're talking like propagandists. This sounds like propaganda. One, studies show that Fox News is actually pretty balanced when it comes to coverage of Trump, with a slight majority of their coverage being anti-Trump. While those same studies show that CNN and the other networks are overwhelmingly anti-Trump and anti-Republican. To CNN and their left-wing cohorts in the vast majority of media were all mouthpieces for the Obama administration. They treated him like a rock star during the election, and then they were head over heels in love with him for eight years. The man was regularly portrayed as some sort of a holy figure and even God. In a way, Obama's standing above the country, above, above the world. He's sort of God. A few months ago, Stelter was being interviewed by a fellow left-winger, albeit a self-aware left-winger, named Ezra Klein who calls out CNN's bias, but Stelter just denies and deflects using those tactics that I mentioned earlier. Ezra says, quote, I think cable news goes in the direction of already knowing what works. Like, let's make them pissed. And some, I think, goes in the other direction. But I do think the incentives here are rough. But I do think the incentives here are rough. And, and a lot of what you're describing, let's be honest, a lot of what you're describing is Fox. You're talking about talk shows on Fox, pro-Trump talk shows on no, Fox. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm describing CNN just as much. I'm describing MSNBC too. No. Do you think CNN keeps people's blood pressure down? I don't. I watch CNN a lot, and my blood pressure was fine the last time I went to the doctor. <laughs> Absolutely 100% snake oil. Look, Fox News came about as a response to media that was all one point of view, the Democrat Party point of view. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not a fan of Fox News. But Fox is just a symptom of the disease, and the disease is Democrat Party political propaganda masquerading as objective news. Stelter proved this again yesterday when he blew the lid off typo gate, exposing typos in Trump's tweets. Sure, unemployment is at record lows, and sure, Hong Kong is fighting for its freedoms, and I'm sure other important stuff is going on in the world. But typos! You know, if Twitter just added an edit function, this probably wouldn't be an issue at all. Here's what the researchers found. On average, Trump makes a spelling error at least one out of every five days. And since taking office, he's made at least 188 of them total. More, more than 188 <laughs> spelling errors on Twitter. <laughs> Is this story supposed to put you over the fence if you didn't already hate Trump after CNN compared him to the world's worst dictators? Called him a Russian agent and all the worst words on the left's list of labels? Racist, Racist sexist, who is a xenophobe, xenophobic, who is a sexist, who is a religious bigot. You didn't hate him before, but now after this breaking news, you're a socialist. After manufacturing outrage and hatred of our president, Brian Seltzer switches gears and becomes the personal PR firm of ISIS. He apparently feels the need to reassure its followers that their former leader did not go out whimpering and crying like bad orange man claimed. Uh, I think it is clear a week after the al-Baghdadi raid, he made it up. We, we should just be honest about that. All signs point to the fact that he made up the claims about lying, uh, about crying and whimpering, swearing that al-Baghdadi was crying and whimpering in those last moments. Even, so he seems to have made it up. This is par for the course from the president. You got that, ISIS? 
You may have been disillusioned and demoralized after the embarrassing end of your leader, but don't fret because Brian Stelter is here to cheer you up and repair the damaged reputation of your leader. Can you believe your ears? So what if he made it up? He was obviously trying to destroy al-Baghdadi's image and perhaps the will of people to follow the next leader. But no, taking another shot of the president is apparently more important. Defending America's enemies must be a new CNN policy because two other prominent pundits from the network also defended al-Baghdadi against Trump's claims. Don't use that language which will echo around the Middle East about things like dogs and whimpering. A human being has died, we don't celebrate that. A human being has died, we don't celebrate that. If you want to know how they got to their fabled 10,000 lies claim, look no further than this kind of drivel. That's all I have for you today, folks. If you like my content and you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Subscribestar. For just $1 a month, you'll help this channel to survive and continue to grow. You'll also get early access to videos and exclusive live stream events. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.